Today we're going to be in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 2 through 5. And I want to talk for a moment about fulfilling your ministry. Because ultimately, this is very important to each and every Christian, is to fulfill what God has planned for us to fulfill. And I love to preach on this because it encourages us to do something for God. We don't want to get too carried away in this world that we forget about God. God, remember, should be our first priority. So let's see what Paul is telling Timothy. Here, it says in verse 2, preach the word. So right there, preach the word. Now we can preach the word in many different ways. We can do it vocally. We can do it through our actions. Uh, we can do it through how we live, which I guess that's part of your action. But preach the word. This here is very important. And I believe we all have the responsibility of preaching God's word in one form or another. He says, be ready in season and out of season. So be ready in season and out of season simply means when you're in church and when you're not in church, when you're at work, when you know you are shopping, when you're out at the park with the kids, when you're exercising. So this simply is telling us to be ready. It doesn't matter the time. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, dressed the part. Doesn't matter if you look the part. It doesn't matter if you're in church. It doesn't matter if you have a microphone or a video camera in front of you. That doesn't matter. The Bible is teaching us that we need to be ready because we all know that when Jesus Christ comes back, we need to be doing something for the Lord so that way he won't catch us sleeping, right? He also tells us to convince this is very important and a lot of times we don't do this you know we preach the word of god but then we just say okay i did my part and that's it i mean there is some responsibility of convincing somebody so how do you convince somebody well the same way you would convince somebody that you know you need help the same way you would convince somebody that you need something from them. You convince them, and a lot of us are very convincing when it comes to what we want. But he's telling us that we need to convince. And this, I believe, the way we can get good at this is convincing them through our own experience. We have been through a certain something, and we can use that to tell a story to try to convince them. Now, you can't make them, you can just try to convince them. And he also tells us to rebuke. Now, rebuke is not, you know, sending them to hell. It's just rebuking them. If they've done something wrong, then you rebuke them. You tell them what they did wrong and you help them. You encourage them. You build them up. You don't throw them away and you don't cast them away into hell. Exhort, that's your building up. So we have to build people up in order to get them to come to Christ. This is very important. There is a strategy to our preaching, and we can do this in many different ways, whether it be vocal or whether it be through our actions. And then it says, with all long suffering and teaching. Now, just as God is long suffering and patient that we all come to Him, so too we must have the same mindset. Be long suffering for the people in this world. Be long suffering in hopes that, you know, when you do your part, that eventually they will see God and they will change and they will give their lives to Jesus Christ and have a heart that seeks after God. And we have to teach, right? Teaching is very important because what you're doing is you're helping them learn the Word of God. You're not just telling them something and expecting them to, you know, learn that way. You are teaching them. You're showing them in the Bible. You're showing them through example. You have to teach them like a teacher would teach the kid. So we have to remember we are teachers. We have to convince, we have to rebuke, we have to exhort, and we have to do it with all long-suffering. This sounds like we have to be parents, right? So that's what Paul is telling Timothy. That's one thing that we have to remember in our own Christian walks, that we have to preach the word. And verse 3, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. 
but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. So this is important because he's telling us that there's going to come a time when the people are not going to endure sound doctrine. Sound doctrine, of course, is the word that we are proclaiming. That is Jesus Christ. And a lot of people are not going to endure the sound doctrine that we are bringing, the sound doctrine that we have to give to them, which is Jesus Christ, because according to their own desires, they will have itchy ears. And what they're going to want is not what you are telling them, but what they want to hear. That's what itching ears are. You know, a lot of times people go to church and they try to find the right church that suits their needs. And if that church does not suit their needs, then they leave and they go try to find a church that will suit their needs. And let me tell you, there is a church out there for each and every one of us with itchy ears. If you want it, you're going to find it, but you're going to be church hopping. And sound doctrine is not going to itch your ear. Sound doctrine is, like it said, rebuking, exhorting with all long suffering and teaching and convincing. And a lot of people don't like that. So there's going to come a time when this is going to happen. So just remember that if they do not want to hear you, as long as you've done what Paul is telling Timothy to do here, then you are fulfilling your ministry. Verse four, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. You know, this is what we're trying to avoid. This is why the Holy Spirit uses us so that we can proclaim a message or we can show the way we live to these people so that they can see that there is power in God's word. But just because you do your part does not mean that they're going to change. They're going to turn their ears from sound doctrine, from the Word of God, and they're going to turn to fables. Whatever it is that the people are saying that they want to hear, they're going to go. And a lot of the times, it's because they don't study on their own. If, if we study the Bible, then we would know what to look out for. But the issue is a lot of the people in the world don't study the Bible like, you know, a Christian should study the Bible every single day. And if this is talking about Christians having itching ears and only wanting to hear what they want to hear to satisfy their needs, then that's wrong of you. If that's you, you have to read the Bible and let the word of God speak to you. So that way you will not turn away to lies. Okay. Lies can be very convincing when they come from the enemy. So you have to be very cautious and I can understand it uh, in the people of this world, but I don't understand it for the church people because the church people should be reading the Bible and should be getting closer to God on a daily basis. And if you're just going to church on Sundays and Wednesdays or whenever you go to church uh, and you're not, you know, studying God's word when you're at home or when you're not in the church, then you're not ready. The Bible tells us to be ready in season and out of season, and you will not be ready. And it's a lot easier for you to fall away and to give into the lies rather than to know what's in the word of God. Verse five, but you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. So Paul is telling Timothy here, be watchful in everything. Don't just take what you see, take what you hear and say that that's gospel. You need to be watchful. You have to have the Holy Spirit in your hearts and in your lives so that you will know what to hear. Is that from God? Did God just speak this? Did was that God that put that in my heart or was that my own flesh? Right. So you have to be very careful on what you are allowing in your lives. So that's why Paul is telling Timothy as a young pastor that you need to be watchful in all things and you need to endure the afflictions because afflictions are going to come to those of us who need to fulfill our ministry because we're going to see this. 
It's not only going to happen to us, it's going to happen to every Christian who wants to fulfill their ministry. So we have to stand strong. And if there's one piece of advice that I can give you today is read your Bibles, know your Bibles back and front, Old Testament, New Testament, know who Jesus is, know what he came to do. And that way you will be fixed and secured and you will not move uh, with itching ears and you will not chase fables, but you will know the Word of God because the Word of God is able to transform you, it's able to change your lives, and it's also able to help you fulfill your ministry and change the peoples in this world's lives. God bless.